This is Shadea. This is Shadesh. Welcome to the online Bible study brought to you by Grace TV. Here we serve bite-sized spiritual meals through Soul Food First. Please like and follow the Grace TV Facebook page. And please subscribe to the Grace TV YouTube channel. We hope you are ready. Please stand by. Season 3 of Soul Food First is about to be served! This is Pastor Dean Padayag. Welcome to Soul Food First. Today our lesson is about guilt and shame. We will look at this topic uh, into two categories. First is the guilt and shame as immediate results of the original sin. You know, that singular sin that Adam and Eve committed. Obviously, we'll talk about this before salvation. Second is the guilt and shame as immediate results of the consequential sins, plural, after salvation. Now, the first instance that we find guilt and shame as far as the Bible is concerned was when Adam and Eve sinned against God. You see, God commanded them in Genesis chapter 2 verses 16 down to verse 17 not to eat the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. But in Genesis chapter 3, we find them disobeying what God said, eating the fruit and sinning against God. And as the consequences of their sin, in Genesis chapter 3 verse 7, the Bible tells us that their eyes were opened. They realized that they were naked and so they made coverings for themselves. Then in verse 8, the Bible says that they hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. There's guilt and shame right there. The feelings of guilt and shame arise when our conscience is telling us that we have violated God's command. Now, it is very interesting that uh, when God found Adam and Eve, they tried to deny their guilt through a blame game. Adam blamed Eve and then Eve blamed the serpent. But God knows that they were so guilty. Their guilt manifested through their thoughts. They were so afraid of God and full of shame because they were naked. Their guilt also manifested through their actions. They were running away from God trying to cover themselves and also they were hiding from the presence of the Lord. And then their guilt manifested through their speech. They told God that they were naked. The good news is while they were reasoning out and hiding behind the trees, drowning in their sin, shame, and guilt, God dealt with them in his love and grace. God dealt with them by killing an animal to make clothes of skin for them, providing a covering of atonement for their sin as indicated to us in the book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 21. And in so doing, he established the principle of sacrifice which would eventually lead to Christ ultimate sacrifice of himself on the cross of Calvary. Now, while Adam and Eve's sin was already forgiven, their physical nakedness was covered with animal skin and their relationship with the Lord was restored. It's so sad that sin and guilt have already entered the world. And that is why all the children of Adam, all of us, we are all sinners and all guilty before the Lord. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5 verse 12, Therefore, just as through one man's sin, that, that is uh, Adam, entered, or sin entered into the world and death 
through sin. Thus death is spread to all men because all sinned. We are all sinners and that's bad news. But Romans chapter 5 verse 17, the Bible says, For if by one man's offense, that's the offense or sin of Adam, death reign through the one. Much more, those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one. And again, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, the one, the, the, the giver of life and righteousness. Those who trusted the gospel and believe in Christ's death for their sins, his burial and resurrection, the Bible says they are saved. And regardless of the wickedness of their sins in the past, the Bible says in Ephesians 2.13, they have been made near by the blood of Christ. Romans 5.10 says, they were reconciled to God. Ephesians 1.7 says, they are redeemed by the blood of Christ. And then we have 1 Corinthians 6.11, they were washed, sanctified, and justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God. And then Ephesians 4.30, the Bible says, They are sealed until the day of redemption. That is the redemption of uh, the, their bodies in the rapture. And with the forgiveness of our sins, the forgiveness of sins that God has given us because of His grace and faith, we also experience the removal of guilt and shame. So, positionally speaking, we are now back to our original state as if we have not sinned at all in our entire life. Praise the Lord for that. But, Despite of this salvation and assurance that we have, Satan, you know, the accuser, deceiver, uh, the liar, keeps on reminding us of our past, reminding us of our guilt and shame. And so, so many believers are still living in their guilt and shame today, despite the eternal salvation and the assurance that they have. Despite being already saved from the penalty and the power of sin, we are still to be saved from the presence of sin. And just like us, the Apostle Paul, the Apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, being in the flesh, also had his own struggles in his Christian life. In Romans chapter 7, Verses 18 through 20, he says, For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing uh, good dwells. For the will is present with me, but how to perform what is good, I do not find. For the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, that I practice. And then in verse 20, he says, Now if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. And every time we sin against God, because of our fleshly nature, we still feel shame and guilt. That is because of the Holy Spirit that is in us telling us, that we are doing something not according to God's word and God's will. So, when that happens, we need to repent. Again, as believers, we need to repent when we sin against God. Meaning, we have to change our mind. This repentance is not to be saved again, but to show that we are sorrowful or sorry for the sins that we have done against our Savior. The result of this repentance is the restoration of our good fellowship and relationship with the Lord. Speaking to the believers in Corinth, in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 9 through verse 10, Apostle Paul says, Now I rejoice, not that 
you were uh, made sorry, but your sorrow led to repentance. For you were made sorry in a godly manner that you might suffer loss from us in nothing. For godly sorrow produces repentance, leading to salvation, not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. Now again, this is talking about uh, godly sorrow that we as believers must do, leading to repentance or the change of mind, then change of action. Now, a few things we must remember. Number one, we must trust God and believe what He says who we are in Him. He says we are saved, sealed, secure, washed, sanctified, justified, and forgiven. That's who we are in Christ. Number two, we are no longer sinners but saints. When we sin, it should be accidental and not intentional. Number three, whatever guilt and shame Satan will throw at us, we must remember that there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus as indicated to us in Romans chapter 8 verse 1. Then number four, in Philippians chapter 3 verses 13 through 14, the Bible encourages us to forget the past. Regardless of how terrible it was, we have to forget the, uh, the past and focus on what is ahead of us. Beloved, please tune in tomorrow as we talk about loneliness. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy your soul food.